talking about Nigerian mentality, this is our very next story. In fact, I find it so interesting, I have to take out my glasses. You should. <laughs> because it does not look like this happened in Nigeria. You should. Jam remits another 7.8 billion naira to the federal government. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board says it has remitted 7.8 million billion naira to the government. The board's head media and information, Fabian Benjamin, made this known to the news agency of Nigeria on Sunday in Lagos. According to him, the board had planned to remit the amount of surplus to the federal government as was done in 2017. He said that the amount was a surplus generated from the conduct of the board's 2018 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. However, government in its magnanimity graciously directed that we remit about 5.6 billion naira and use the balance for restructuring of the board's headquarters to meet up with its international status. Chukudi, in Nigeria, we do not see situations where you have excess money and you remit the excess money. We've seen situations of people who have been giving money to fund projects, and they squandered the money and made it their personal interest. But this is very interesting and very, very remarkable. Very interesting. You see, I hope that, you know, soon, the history of the Joint Admission and Matriculations Board under the watch of Professor Ishia Koloe, they will be written by a historian and astute diplomat who is going to chronicle all that he has done since he assumed office in 2016. When he assumed office in 2016, you know, I, it was with mixed reactions. Certain people were like, ah, this man is too, because, I mean, he came highly recommended from the University of Illori. People were like, ah, this man is too like this, like this. He doesn't, he's not flexible. He's very rigid. He doesn't allow for, perhaps these people were people who, you know, looked at his track record in Uni Illori and said, we are in for a bumpy ride. Let me shock you. In 2017, eh, they remitted around 7 billion. Wow. to the federal co government after, you know, their expenses. Now, we always say that government should do all that they can. And we always insist that the people must also play their part. Now, the agencies of government even have a greater responsibility. When, in our little way, we do all that we, we, all that we are supposed to do, those that assume public office, that represent our interests, will have no business if we begin to hold them accountable and responsible. Now, do you know that in 2017, Jam turned 40 years? I would like you to guess, AEJ, EOJ, in 40 years, can you just guess how much Jam had remitted to the federal government in 40 years? I can't even guess. I can't actually even <laughs> guess. Because I'm sure you people will be afraid. Mm. Do you know that according to, you know, reports that Professor Isha Koloi, they were delivering a paper at an event organized to celebrate the 61st um, birthday um, party for um, the governor of Oshun State, um, Ogbeni Raoul Farid Beshola, he said that in, in 40 years, the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board had remitted to the federal government in the cumulative of 40 years, 52 million naira. What? 52 million naira in 40 years, 52 million naira. And in 2017 alone, they remitted seven over 7 billion. billion. Hmm. And in 2018, they have also done the same. Now, this is what these agencies of government do. When the federal government, sorry, when the executive arm of government submits the budget estimates. You know how they do now. They lobby to raise, to do this, to do that. Now, using the power of appropriation, the legislative arm of government would, you know, try to ensure that if we use these funds, it goes to the right channel. Then these agencies begin to spend. Now, what they do is, for example, if I give you a thousand naira to get me food, and you know that you can get maybe yabasira or yaselimo or one of these sweet eateries, and you know that in the eatery to cost you 800 naira, yeah, but will cost maybe 400. Yeah, sell him on maybe 350. And I will still get the same value, aside from the packaging of this one that they will put inside line on. And you go into where they are say, use, where they make use of AC to sell the food. And I come back to you and say, uh, you sent me food. Take your food. I keep what is left because I have bought the food for you. Now, what these agencies do is, okay, this is what was, you know, um, appropriated. This is what we have done. And we are going to keep the rest. You are not supposed to keep the rest. And this tells us a lot that if Jam under Professor Isha Oloede in like two years, plus or minus 15 billion naira has been remitted to the federal government, then it shows that we need to begin to hold people accountable and responsible. I just cannot believe that in 40 years of Jam's existence, only 52 million naira had been remitted so to the federal government. So where have all the billions been going That is what to. we always say. And I'm sure that this man will now have accumulated lots of enemies within the system. Of because course. Because he has exposed the kangaroo. Is he not the same jam that snakes swallowed money? Have you forgotten? I remember. The same jam where snakes swallowed money. Mr. Mr. Vault, you know? So you, we, we need to begin to look at all of this. And you begin to tell. Now, when people notice that the man at the helm would not take any nonsense, he was in the video now where Sister Philomena 
Madam Philomena, because somebody that, uh, that has a snake that can swallow 36 million, you can't call her your sister. Madam Philomena, <laughs> she, she said it. There was a video recording of her saying, uh, when, when I pray, they will put it there, snake will come, the snake will swallow it. She said it, he was laughing. He was, he was dumbfounded. He did not know what to say. We also heard of the one in Nasarawa that burnt his car with scratch cards. You no, know, he burnt his car and claimed that, you know, the scratch cards got burnt in the car. But because of technology, they just checked and said, ah, the people that even use this thing are already in 300 level. How come you don't say that you're born? So we must, as a people, understand that change begins with us. If we want to get the very best of government, because, I mean, the person in office can still go abroad to get the very best of Medicare, send their children abroad, live a very, you know, uh, live life like in Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of the day, when we complain, they throw pitans. We saw what happened in the Kitty State, vote buying 5,000, 4,000. Somebody that has been owing salaries for several months, now sending uh, government stipends to people. So when we, as a people, decide that we are going to take our destiny in our hands and play a part to ensure that people do not take us for a ride, then we begin to commend and celebrate such people. Now, somebody like Professor Ishak Oluede is someone that has done something exemplary, and Nigerians should speak about this. When you're giving funds, you disburse your funds. If you have excesses, you return it to the federal government. I'm just saying, that's why it's easy for people to say, ah, if, you're, if your brother is in government, Tunko, will you people not chop money if you are there? We need to correct this mentality and mindset. When people say, ah, it's Nigeria, this is how we do. There are people who are really particular about their responsibilities and the objective of the agency that they represent. And money is not everything. You know people tell you everybody has a price. I always say it. You say, I'm still young, go. you understand? I know I need money because... As an Igbo man, we don't joke with money. But the truth is, one, one thing I always pray is that God, the Almighty Father, whatever, whatever grace you would imbue me with and creativity so that I will be contented with the little I have. I mean, lead a decent life. Be able to take care of your immediate needs. You know, be free from certain sicknesses because when you're desperate, when the vicissitudes of life hit you, that's when you begin to run from pil pil pillar to post, especially in a society where nothing works. You cannot get the very best of Medicare and you can get fired for speaking out. So what we must begin to do is understand the fact that the country can work. People went to school on scholarship. I heard somebody say that, you know, when she was in the, in, in the university back in the day, they used to get bursary, 600 naira. From that bursary, you could travel to London back, you know, live no, right without now, stressing the your parents. Is, the bursary system in a lot of universities is now political. It it's not even existing. No scholarship anymore. I, I got bursaries, but nobody, what, what was shocking me then was that they the would tell you to write your local government and this. Exactly. Somebody gets a court. You know we also, we know all this fact, now. Even when I was at university in the UK, there was a Nigerian student in my university that had been sponsored by the federal government to come and study at that university. And I met him, and about two months later, we were actually raising money to keep him in the university because the Nigerian government had not sent his fees and the university had sent about four letters to him saying that if you don't pay X amount by Friday, we are going to have to dismiss you for the from the university, which means he would have had to just go back to Nigeria. Can you imagine? You've been brought abroad on a scholarship from your government and your government is not even supporting you as they said they would. And we're all there scrambling to raise money to see how we can help his education. And that's in another country, let alone what goes on here. Now, the truth is government must have have, in certain cases, disbursed these funds, but certain people will be sitting on the funds. It's, it's normal. But that is not exonerating the government and saying the government is, you know, doing all it's supposed to do. But the truth is, when we speak about government, we make it look like some, like it's an institution that is constituted by spirits. It's people too. If we show this sympathy and have this understanding that, you know, going out of our own little way to make other people happy, it's our only two contribution to ensuring that, you know, we make humanity one that people can look at and say, yes, indeed, you know, we live in a world where there's compassion and kindness, then we deserve more. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.